Welcome back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. I bet a lot of you have dogs, and I'm sure that they can sometimes be naughty. Well, when that happens, we can take them to obedience school so they learn how to behave. Well, in today's story, Mrs. LaRue sends Ike, her dog, to obedience school after he's been in trouble. Only, Ike sees the school as a prison and writes letters trying to convince her to let him come home. Let's listen to Dear Mrs. LaRue, Letters from Obedience School, written and illustrated by Mark Teague, and see if Ike succeeds. Snort City Register Gazette, September 30th. Local dog enters obedience school. Ike LaRue. Citing a long list of behavioral problems, Snort City resident Gertrude R. LaRue yesterday enrolled her dog Ike in the Igor Brotweiler Canine Academy. Established in 1953, the Academy has a history of dealing with such issues. I'm at my wit's end, said Mrs. LaRue. I love Ike, but I'm afraid he's quite spoiled. He steals food right off the kitchen counter, chases the neighbor's cats, howls whenever I'm away, and last week, while I was crossing the street, he pulled me down and tore my best camel's hair coat. I just don't know what else to do. School officials were unavailable for comment. Dear Mrs. LaRue, October 1st, how could you do this to me? This is a prison, not a school. You should see the other dogs. They are bad dogs, Mrs. LaRue. I do not fit in. Even the journey here was a horror. I am very unhappy and may need something to chew on when I get home. Please come right away. Sincerely, Ike. This is really what's happening, and this is what Ike thinks is happening. <laughs> Dear Mrs. LaRue, were you really so upset about the chicken pie? You know you might have discussed it with me. You could have said, Ike, don't eat the chicken pie. I'm saving it for dinner. Would that have been so difficult? It would have prevented a lot of hard feelings. Needless to say, I am being horribly mistreated. You say I should be patient and accept that I'll be here through the term. Are you aware that the term lasts two months? Do you know how long that is in dog years? Sincerely, Ike. Look at all the stuff he has. Uh-oh. Dear Mrs. LaRue, it's now October 3rd. I'd like to clear up some misconceptions about the Hibbins' cats. First, they are hardly the little angels Mrs. Hibbins makes them out to be. Second, how should I know what they were doing out on the fire escape in the middle of January? They were being a bit melodramatic, don't you think? The way they cried and refused to come down. It's hard to believe they were really sick for three whole days. But you know cats. Your dog, Ike. Look at the look on their faces, the cats. It's October 4th now. Dear Mrs. LaRue, you should see what goes on around here. The way that my teach, I mean, warden, Miss Klondike, barks orders is shocking. Day after day, I'm forced to perform the most meaningless task. Today it was sit and roll over all day long. I flatly refuse to roll over. It's ridiculous. I won't do it. Of course, I was severely punished. And another thing, who will help you cross the street while I'm away? You know you have a bad habit of not looking both ways. Think of all the times I've saved you. Well, there was that one time anyway. I must say, you weren't very grateful, complaining on and on about the tiny rip in your ratty old coat. But the point is, you need me. Yours, Ike. 
It says solitary confinement. Oh my. That's where you put someone by themselves. Uh-oh. Now it's October the 5th. Look at this book, Nasty Dungeons of the World. He's got a blender with a drink in it and gourmet dog food. Oh my goodness. Dear Mrs. LaRue, the guards here are all caught up in this good dog, bad dog thing. I hear it constantly. Good dog, Ike. Don't be a bad dog, Ike. Is it really so good to sit still like a lummox all day? Nevertheless, I refuse to be broken. Miss Klondike has taken my typewriter. She claims it disturbs the other dogs. Does anybody care that the other dogs disturb me? Yours, Ike. Some bad in the corner there. It's now October the 6th. Dear Mrs. LaRue, were the neighbors really complaining about my howling? Is it hard to imagine? First, I didn't howl that much. You were away those nights, so you wouldn't know, but trust me, it was quite moderate. Second, let's recall that these are the same neighbors who are constantly waking me up in the middle of the afternoon with their loud vacuuming. I say we all have to learn to get along. My life here continues to be a nightmare. You wouldn't believe what goes on in the cafeteria. Sincerely, Ike. P.S. I don't want to alarm you, but the thought of escape has crossed my mind. Look at the waiter. And, and there's a menu. Now he's saying, it says no howling, biting, scratching, growling, slobbering, or barking, and no seconds. It means you don't get any more food. Hmm. Dear Mrs. LaRue, it's now October the 7th. I hate to tell you this, but I am terribly ill. It started in my paw, causing me to limp all day. Later, I felt queasy so that I could barely eat dinner except for the yummy gravy. Then I began to moan and howl. Finally, I had to be taken to the vet. Dr. Wilfrey claims that he can't find anything wrong with me, but I am certain I have an awful disease. I must come home at once. Honestly yours, Ike. <laughs> Patient, Ike LaRue, diagnosis, hypochondria. That means you think you're sick when you're not. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a Bruntweiler Pumpkin Festival, friends. And it's now October the 8th. Dear Mrs. LaRue, thank you for the lovely Get Well card. Still, I'm a little surprised that you didn't come get me. I know what Dr. Wilfrey says, but is it really wise to take risk with one's health? I could have a relapse, you know. With fall here, I think about all the fine times we used to have in the park. Remember how sometimes you would bring along a tennis ball? You would throw it and I would retrieve it every time, except for once when it landed in something nasty and I brought you back a stick instead. Ah, uh, how I miss those days. Yours truly, Ike. P.S. Imagine how awful it is for me to be stuck inside my tiny cell. P.P.S. I still feel pretty sick. <laughs> He's not in a cell, silly doggy. October the 9th. Dear Mrs. LaRue, by the time you read this, I will be gone. I have decided to attempt a daring escape. I'm sorry it has come to this, since I am really very good dog, but frankly you've left me no choice. How sad it is not to be appreciated. From now on, I'll wander from town to town without a home, or even any dog food, most likely. Such is the life of a desperate outlaw. I will try to write to you from time to time as I carry on with my life of hardship and danger. Your lonely fugitive, Ike. <laughs> Ooh, 
The Stort City Register Gazette, October 10th. LaRue escapes doggy detention. Former Snort City resident Ike LaRue escaped last night from the dormitory at the Igor Brotweiler Canine Academy. The dog is described as toothy by local police. His current whereabouts are unknown. To be honest, I thought he was bluffing when he told me he was planning to escape, said a visibly upset Gertrude R. LaRue, the dog's owner. Ike tends to be a bit melodramatic, you know. Now I can only pray that he'll come back. Asked if she would return Ike to Brotwaller Academy, Mrs. LaRue said that she would have to wait and see. He's a good dog, basically, but he can be difficult. Wanted. Escape canine. Ike. Reward. Return to Igor Brotwaller Academy. Oh, my goodness. October 11th. Somewhere in America. I continue to suffer horribly as I roam this barren wasteland. Who knows where my wanderings will take me now? Hopefully to some place with yummy food. Remember the special treats you used to make for me? I miss them. I miss our nice comfy apartment. But mostly, I miss you. Your sad dog, Ike. P.S. I even miss the Hibbins' cats, in a way. <laughs> October 12th, still somewhere. Oh, I think he's in a plane now. See those clouds? Dear Mrs. LaRue, the world is a hard and cruel place for a stray dog. You would scarcely believe the misery I've endured, so I have decided to return home. You may try to lock me up again, but that is a risk I must take. And frankly, even more than myself, I worry about you. You may not know it, Mrs. LaRue, but you need a dog. Your misunderstood friend, Ike. <laughs> Look at the picture. He's snorting city or bust. He's hitchhiking. Oh, my. <gasps> oh, my. The Snort City Register Gazette, October 13th. Hero dog saves owner. Ike LaRue, until recently a student at the Igor Brotweiler Canine Academy, returned to Snort City yesterday in dramatic fashion. In fact, he arrived just in time to rescue his owner, Gertrude R. LaRue of 2nd Avenue, from an oncoming truck. <coughs> Mrs. LaRue had made the trip downtown to purchase a new camel's hair coat. Apparently, she neglected to look both ways before stepping out into traffic. The daring rescue was witnessed by several onlookers, including patrolman Newton Schmitzer. He rolled right across the two lanes of traffic to get at her, said Schmitzer. It was really something. I haven't seen rolling like that since I left the police academy. Look at that. Woo! -hoo. Mrs. LaRue was unhurt in the incident, though her coat was badly torn. I don't care about that, she said. I'm just happy to have my Ike back home where he belongs. LaRue said she plans to throw a big party for the dog. All the neighbors will be there, and I'm going to serve Ike's favorite dishes. Look at the cats. <laughs> I'll bet he can't wait to taste the chicken pie. Uh-oh. <gasps> Well, bookworms, I hope you enjoyed this story. I thought it was hilarious how Ike saw the school as a prison and horrible and how it really was pretty posh. Now when you get a chance, go to your local library and check out other books like this or go to a bookstore and buy a copy for yourself. If you like reading with me, become an official bookworm and subscribe. Until next time, bye! Yeah!